of the free show. show. Well done, Penrith. G'day everybody, welcome to episode 249 of Not The Footy Show. You can't see his face, but I'm Warwick Nicholson. That is Mr. Rob Cox. He is stoked because his de facto team, the Penrith Panthers, are your 2021 NRL Premiers. They've beaten South Sydney 14 points to 12 in the grand final this evening in front of 75% of the crowd, I guess, at Suncorp. And uh, have delivered, I think, Cox Smith, one of the really good grand finals. But I'm not going to put it in the great category. What about you? Yeah, Penrith, my my bit on the side team uh, got up, so it's always nice when you got your bit on the side does the business. Your motel um, down the road. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just got to think of an, an old joke, but I won't say it, uh, mate. No, look, it, it was a game. I mean, that was a. Jeez, I, uh, I I thought it was a fantastic game of football. I mean, whenever a grand final is decided by two points, mm. it's a good game. You know, I mean, it was back and forward. And I mean, you know, South didn't have a whole lot of ball throughout the whole game. Or, or really, any luck, I mean, they, if you think about it. Yeah, not, not, not a lot of luck. A tiny little bit of luck. But I mean, Penrith were the ones that got the most of the, the calls. And, yeah. And, but, you know, we'll go through the, a few of the calls, I'm sure. But I, I don't think there was anything really untoward with the calls. I don't think, you know. Oh, there, um, were, a few, there were a few shoppers from from old mate, uh, Jerry Suncorp Sutton, but I don't, I don't, uh, to, to reinforce sort of what you're getting at, really enjoyed it as a grand final. Is it a great grand final? That's sort of, I don't think it's in the, in the, in that yeah. category. Um, well, I, I think, but the, Penrith, I think the, the defense deserving wing was great. Penrith to be I think the defense wing. was great in, in that hmm. game. I, I, you know, if, if you want to look at a, you know, there's lots of, whenever we talk about moments in the league, we generally talk about big attacking moments or something you know, busting play or something like that. But the defensive efforts from both teams were pretty darn good. I mean, mm. they were out on their feet in the first half and they came back out and did it all again. So, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Good game. 8-6 at half time. Uh, Matt Burton scored the opening try. Uh, nice shift to the left from Penrith. And, and probably un- underscored something we saw the rest of the game, which was the lack of pressure on the ball carrier from South something that just yep. was evident to me and my flatmate as we were watching it is that Nathan Cleary had seven hours to kick every ball he kicked. And mm. even on the try that Burton scored, Luai just had no pressure coming in on the inside to, to make him rush his decision. And that just allowed yep. them to open up the big gap that um, Burton sliced through to get him on the board, 6 nothing. Uh, coincidentally, 
the only the second try that Penrith scored through the hands in the entire final series, uh, which yeah. is a stat that you, you know, we we did cover this. Ivan changed the way they played. I, I do. I, I really wonder, and, and and we'll get into the tries, but I just wonder, Cocksmith, that easy game they had against Penrith uh, against Parramatta in round twenty five. Yeah. Do you reckon Ivan just said it's not gonna, it's not gonna fly? We have to, we have to win the the old fashioned way because that game was easy. That was a, that was one that you just go, oh, that's that's not what you want because P- Parramatta didn't la- name any players if you remember. Yeah, um, yeah. Look, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know if that would have changed Ivan's mind. I think he, I think he might have known that they needed a little bit more grit. Um, in their game and, and what better way than to um, really concentrate on defense, you know? Mm. And I think that they, I think they were doing so many drills, defensive drills that they kind of lost their way a little bit in that first final um, and uh, didn't have enough attack and it was clunky. And I don't think their, their attack looked bad tonight. I, no, I just think that South... I wasn't a fan of it. I thought they were poor. No, I, I, I really didn't. I think, I think South made a couple of defensive Errors, but for the most part, South's defence is pretty good, mm. um, and I think you can only play uh, as as much as the other team, the opposition will let you play. You know, I thought so, they were a little bit, uh, little bit uh, gun shy until the last tackle most of the time. Penrith, uh, just mm. it's I don't know. I, I, look, Penrith, Pat South, fantastic in defence, they really were, and you know they didn't have anything really go their way when it came to those decisions. So for them to stick in the game and score the next try, Cody Walker with one of the it, this was one of the great grand final tries. It was a a, a real good try, yeah. Re- really, a great example of he just decided I'm going to try and make it happen myself. That fend yeah. on Ivan oh, Ivan Cleary on Nathan Cleary is one for the ages. I mean, I think Nathan's mm. still still going backwards in his mind. It, he got absolutely late on his, um, but he then yeah. beat Capewell. He beat um, Aki Corusau coming across with just a turn of speed that. Not only beat Coruscant, but it left Dylan Edwards clutching at thin air. That it was mm. just, and I actually said to, they say we go in at half time and there was a penalty to Cleary in the thirty second minute. But I said to my flat mate, I said this feels a little bit like the Canberra Roosters game from a couple of years back. An individual mm. try. Remember White and got Canberra back into the game, and then and yeah. then it was sort of then after half time it was all um, Canberra, but they couldn't sort of. Hit the killer blow. So I wondered going into half time, are we going to see something similar to this where Penrith had had all the ball? So Penrith had had all the ball in the first half at 60 something possession, 65% yeah. possession. Uh, mm. And yet a bit of individual brilliance has got them back into the game. And will South have the ability in the second half to do what Canberra didn't? Are you going to show your face on television tonight or not? No, mate. I'm going to be tonight. I'm going to be tonight. Um, Surely Nathan Cleary's chin. No. no. Ivan Cleary's salt and pepper hair? No. Put oh. me in as... Um, Cody Walker's put regret. Me as, put me in as Roycey Simmons. All right. Holding the trophy. Just hugging it. Um, I was huge on the fact that I thought the bench for Souths would be too strong. But they caught two, two HIAs in the first... Oh, well, Gagai shouldn't shouldn't have come back, even though he played quite well when he came back. Up his one, he was in, he was he had the roller skates on when he came out of his hit from when he tried to smash Romanovsky. Um, and then the J the Jay Arrow one was the big one because he he got he got hit with a hit that let's just be perfectly frank for two seconds, Foxsmith. In the current way that they they do their crackdown, even their semi crackdown, that contact he had on the kick out had on. Um, uh, Arrow's head that's 10 in the bin isn't it no I, mate I don't think so I think he was falling far enough not to not to get just, 10 in the bin he didn't what, just what tap him no. he didn't just tap him no, I, I, I'm I mean, not saying that he's going off in the grand final of the world of course he hold on hold on of course grand he final he's not going him. off the field he's, he's, he's 6 foot 4 and 120 kilos he doesn't just tap anyone mate I mean you know it's a contact sport if a bloke's falling at, right at the point we saw this we saw this in Canberra at this year when when wasn't Bullymore, it was um was it Hetherington? Someone got sent off mm. for a falling tackle. What are you meant to do? He can't, I'm with you. He can't just stop. He can't just stop and disappear himself. So correct decision. 
I think it's correct decision. Luai oh. cop one. Luai cop one in the back of the head last week. And nothing happened, and nothing will happen to kick out either. And it's the right but decision. We have to change them the way the game's officiated. We have to. We can't keep well, we doing this tonight. in the we, big games. We, did we can't tonight. keep doing I, this in the big games and and, and tell the tonight, world that mate. we care about player safety. It's a joke. It's but it's but hold on, hold on. He wasn't fouled on purpose. Like it wasn't as if kick out went in there with a swinging arm. Like have a have a look at it in slow motion, mate. He didn't. He did not. His have neck a does goal that. Yet. His neck does that, and that's, yeah, that's the thing they're trying it. to stop. It's the thing they're trying to stop. Yeah, I know that, but but it's an accident. It just, the guy was falling, and Kikau was coming across. Like, he didn't even look at him. His head was up. Kikau's head was up. It that's, wasn't like he looked point. at him and what, went... What, what is the line? Because they've just changed the goalpost again. I don't think there again. should be a line. It's a, it's a contact sport, mate. It's, it shouldn't be a line. Just because a bloke cops a knock doesn't mean it's... Ten minutes, give it ten. Give him ten minutes because we feel bad for him. I agree we've, we've with gone, you. We've, I agree we've with gone you. Too far down this road, where every time someone gets a knock on the head, yep. we forget that it's a contact sport. We start thinking it's 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 like, you know, netball or something like that. It's not. It never will be. The game isn't for everybody. Mm-hmm. And we we continue to talk about. Oh, he should have got ten. No, he shouldn't have got ten. I, I think he was desperately unlucky to be put on report. To be honest with oh, you, I disagree with um, that. I just don't think there was anything in it. I honestly think I don't think there was a thing in that. There's other I mean, things that I think. His neck can't stuff bend in. that much, not going report. That's even even if the bin which they've maybe said in this game is now no longer a factor in any decision, which is what I want to see. If they're going to go down that road, they just have to stick to it now because they've well, proven. Of course, in, they've in got to stick to it. Yeah, I, the, they just don't we, have well, any gumption. Will definitely, no gumption. You and I will always agree on consistency is just not there. You know. There's certain things that happen in, in finals and grand finals. That it, it's a different set of rules. It's a little bit like origin. But I wish it wasn't. I wish it was just, mm. you know, it's it's almost like, you know, the, the cynic in me thinks that the referees um, do this do this thing where they blow lots of penalties and send people to the bin during the season um, just to, you know, just to get on TV or something. I don't know why they do it. And then... When we get to the real, the, the pointy end of the season or the real big games, they don't do it. They put their whistle away. How many how many penalties were there tonight? Six or something? Uh, or it wasn't something? many. I was look what you were feeling. I think I, uh, I honestly think there was probably three two six or seven three two penalties. to Penrith. Five five penalties. Three two, three two to Penrith, and they considered five ruck infringements and Gravido's one. Yeah, I mean there was a there was a there was a time there earlier on early on where Penrith got. I think eleven tackles against them from two reset restarts in the in the one passage of play, um, but they probably deserved it. They probably and that was inside. You know, that was just two inside the tens, if I remember. Um, yeah, in, sure. they, had, they, they had South in the iron end in the first half. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I just but I, uh, look at look at the. Just want to bring this one as a as a as a comparison. The Burton hit on who was it right at the end, where he he clipped him. He barely touched him. Oh, and they decided, a, and they an decided that that wasn't a penalty. And I'm just like, yeah. okay, well, that's fine, but don't then come back to us next year in the first game. The moment someone just barely clips someone in the head, you oh. can't penalise them. You, you can't know put it, them on report. It's you just, know it will be. You know it will be. I said to my wife, if that was the first game of next year, yeah, that's a penalty. Absolutely. But I, I, <laughs> I don't think it. I don't think it's a genuine penalty. I don't think the reason what happened is I'm a genuine you. penalty. Just as I don't think kickouts was. And I don't think that they should be penalising it in the grand final or in round one. I think accidents happen in rugby league, and you know, I know that I know that players are coached these days, or, or at least are, are guided in a way to, um, you know, put maximum um, impact onto players, other players in, in their tackling and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean the guy was fouled. I mean, it's just yeah, he's, he's head bent. The position he was in when that happened, he was almost horizontal and he was about two foot off the ground. Um, and, and with the Burton one, geez, I mean, oh, geez, you'd, nothing be, in that. you'd, be, nothing in that you'd be drawing a long bow to, to give that a penalty. I mean, yeah, but they have. They've drawn know. those bows all year. That's the, that's the dis- disconcerting part of it. Can we go back just to the arrow factor? Because mm. he cops that and he's off. Mm. He comes back. Which mm. I was thinking was the same deal with the gay guy. I'm going, they're both not coming back. And then he apparently felt onset symptoms. He also made a tackle on Leota that saved a try in the end of that first half. 
where the contact was really heavy. And I wonder if that one, yep. that one just I made think, it I don't, Yeah. It's, that's, I think oh, that tipped good. him over the edge. Yeah. He's a big yeah. loss for him. Um, but saying that, we hit half time and it's 8 6. There was a penalty to um, uh, Nathan Cleary got a penalty from an arrow indiscretion, which was really lazy. He's the third man into a tackle. And instead of going yep. to the side, he walks through to play the ball and just gave away two points. In a game like this, he may have been, honestly, it might have been a, an end result of the, the hit that he'd taken earlier on. But that's just a gift, two points. And I actually, again, I was saying to my flatmate, that they came up the end of the field in the end of that first half, Penrith. And they had a full set of six with a minute to go. I was calling field goal. Yep. It's 8-6 and I was calling field goal. The reason for that mm. is it takes away giving away a penalty later in the game. Because if you give away a penalty later in the game, it becomes 8 all. Yeah, and I know. But you know why thing, they Right after half time, what happened? They gave away a penalty, it was 8 all. But you, but you just, know why they didn't. In the 39th minute, they're thinking South are out on their feet here. We're going to get six points. They didn't That's attack. They ended up, ended up with a, um, a, a ricochet, I think it was, and then... Coruscant picked the ball up and kicked to nobody and mm. South got the ball. I just that the worst thing that happens there if you go for the field goal is you miss and they get a seven tackle set with 10 seconds left in the half. Mm. I just thought it yeah. was a, a really good opportunity because they would have been they, given there'd been no pressure to that point and the rest of the night on Cleary's kicking game, it would have had all the time in the world and it would have been a mm. I know some people have been thinking, oh, it's a why did you take three point lead? But in the day of the two point field goal, as we saw at the end of the game, three point leads. Spun gold. Basically. Yeah. Half time. Yeah. What were you thinking? Did, I, what were you thinking? Uh, I was thinking. I, I was thinking they should be ahead by more, mm. um, given the amount of ball they had. Um, but I was also thinking, and I, and I said to my 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 son, um, I said one more one try on the on the other end, and they're back in this south. <laughs> with, you know, in a big way. Uh, Bennett obviously would have pulled every string he could in the dressing room with what he said to them. It obviously worked. They definitely came out of the dressing room, yeah. um, probably better than when they went in, um, you know. But but at halftime, I'm I'm still pretty confident that Penrith could see. Uh, Cleary was controlling the game so well with the kick. The kick was without Cleary tonight. Penrith get beaten by sixteen, maybe more. Okay. I mean, Didn't I think he was a way, big difference. Fair enough. I, yeah. I, I think his kicking just kept them in it and kept them kept those repeat sets coming. Um, you know, I, I'm going to contradict myself here when we talk about the um, the Clive Churchill. I'm not yeah, sure yeah. I would have given it to Cleary, but no, we'll I, I think you know, end, Cleary, yeah. Cleary did his job, and his job as a halfback is his team organizer, but also he's the kicker of the ball, and and his kicks tonight were pretty much on point. Uh, and that's been his job for the last four weeks, hasn't it? It's the focus yeah. has really shifted to that uh, in a big way. Yep. Uh, on the flip side, I thought Adam Reynolds actually, apart from one bad kick, I think he had, and he was under a lot more pressure than Cleary throughout the night. He stood stood up and and really yeah. gave um, South a great. I thought he was South's best player. Um, yep. As much as you'd love to see what he happens at the end of the game, not happened to him, but his kicking game was really strong as well. And as you say, you get it to half time, and it feels like South they get to eight all, they get the penalty, and they get, uh, get to eight all. Um, with that, Dylan Edwards is just brain fade. Not a great grand final from him. He was he. He probably cost Penrith at least one, if not two tries in that right edge in that second half. Um, just with almost seeming like he just didn't know what to do. And I'm just, and, and my thought made a really good point. He said, what do you practice as a, as a fullback all year or for the last five years or the last 10 years? You learn how to jump into the back line and feed your outside men. And he, there was two times where he just, just deer in headlight stuff. And, and when South dodges those two bullets, you're like, they just get one back here and, you know, anything can happen. There came a play and it's it's one of the big ones and I'm sure we're going to miss a few of the Jerry Sutton 50-50s or 60-40s or whatever they want to say that didn't go South's way. But there was one bad one and that was the kick-out tackle on Paulo where he came into the line returning a kick mm-hmm. and kick-out smashed him and the ball has just ballooned back into the end goal. And oh, to he touched it, him. didn't he? And it's just like... Why would why would Paulo have tried to pass that? Tape wasn't anywhere near him, and I'm just going. Where, well, how does how does a Sutton miss it? Who's I guess is coming up the field because he's following a kick. But what's the what's the bunker doing? What's the touchy doing? Because there's it's, it's, it's one of those ones where I go. It's pretty blatant that he had to have played at the ball, especially given just before half time, yeah. South lose their challenge on a rule apparently that exists 
when you kick the ball and don't play at it, you get the ball back. But if you pass the ball and you don't play it, you get six again. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree. I, I don't agree with Gus's take on that. I think I think he was totally wrong. Um, uh, away from the Jackson Paulo thing for a second. Hmm. Um, are you talking about the Lenu tackle? So the Lenu one where he puts pressure on him yeah. and then gets called yeah, for not playing it. He didn't play at it. He didn't. He didn't play at it. He, mate, he wasn't even looking at the ball. He did not play at that ball. But His hand touched it. Let me put it this way: If you are trying to put pressure on the kicker, are you not playing at the guy with the ball? No, you no, no. You you play. You're playing at the guy. You're trying to make a tackle on the guy that's kicking the ball, but uh, you're not trying to get the if ball. If that's the rule, that's the rule, and they've interpreted it the right way. That's what Freddie said in post game, and I'll I'll put my hand up and yeah. say, fair enough. I just think yeah. if they're going to call, regardless of intent, when you pass the ball into someone, which is what they do. Yeah, but it's a different. It's a different situation. You, mm. um, Reynolds kicking the ball, and. If you're passing the ball and you stick your hand out, then you're played at the ball. But if you try and, and tackle the bloke, no, if, you, if you, you try and tackle a bloke and it hits your hand, they call six again. You do exactly what Lino did, uh, yeah. did on a guy trying to pass the ball and you will get called and it'll be six again. That's well, a, I, I think not, strange I think, interpretation I think, to have it change. I think nine times out of 10, though, when they replay it, it looks like he, he has played at the ball. Whereas this one, mate, for, for, the, for my life, he didn't look like he was playing at the ball it was his arms are out in a tackling situation like a tackling i i he didn't, disagree on the sense that i think you have if you're trying to put pressure on the guy you're playing at that's the, ball. the rules it's like, you, like you, someone who runs you through can disagree the, you can oh, disagree can all disagree. you want was it's the rules oh, no, yeah. oh well let's you know so, so are high tackles Doc Smith. um yeah but, but they but change those as well you, it's really hard to make a high tackle when the bloke is around your, your ankles yeah. you know? still still high contact that's what i guess that's what i'm saying we're, we're you know we're picking and choosing here both of us um, yeah, that, I, that I, I stand by both of them. But what, what is what is frustrating in that interpretation around what is a charge down as well is that you have a guy who will run at a kicker and not mm. actually lift his hands. He'll run at him to put pressure on him. It'll get kicked into him, and they say yeah. not playing it. They're they're strange ones because if he's not running through to put pressure on, and it's not the same as a tackling one, which is I, I, I know what you're saying, but playing at the playing at the ball is different from making a tackle. If you're making a tackle, you're not playing at the ball. You're trying to make a no, tackle. You're not. But the same interpretation if you run through just to put pressure on the guy, but you don't actually lift your arms or anything. You can it's just not, run through it's and. Not a, it's not a charge down. You're just trying to make. No, a but tackle. charge downs are negative. Don't don't charge the ball down. Is my point. The worst thing you can do is actually try and charge the ball down. What you should do, and that's what this rule allows, is you just run straight at the bloke, and not actually mm-hmm. play at the ball. As long as you're running straight at the bloke and not playing at the ball, and he kicks well, it. As long as you're trying to. You'll get the, as long as you're trying to. As long as you're also trying to affect the tackle. No, it doesn't always work that way. If you just run through, you could run through it at someone and run into the path of the ball and they'll say not not play that because you're not actually trying to not pass. Right. It's just, so, but you, it's, but you, it's the but you still think Lenny was trying to you think Lenny was playing at the ball? The way that I interpret it is that he's trying to put pressure on um Reynolds' ability to kick the ball, thus he's playing at the ball. That's how I but but the rules say, as Even, you as you as you have quite rightly said, that they should not be deemed as being played the ball because he's trying to tackle it. That's what the rules say. So let's go back to the Jackson Paul, I think. I I think you're right. I think Kikau touched it, but the only thing that makes me think, we didn't get a good look at it from the corner camera. Oh, they, right. the angle I saw was clear as day. It's off his hand. Oh, was it? Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they show one from behind. It clearly goes off his hand. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Um, And I thought the only thing that they could be, they could be thinking here is that Kikau has, smashed him and hit his arm and he's hit the guy's arm holding the ball has fired it back. Um, but it went, it sort know, of went up as well, which is the bit that I go, surely right. that gives you the indication that there's some, like there's another bit of contact that forces it to pop um, hmm. up and well, out. Well, it's just unfortunate that South didn't have a, didn't have a, um, uh, you know, a ref's challenge there, um, you know, because. Well, no, the rules is the, is the moral of the story there, isn't it? No, the rules when they challenge. I guess. Cause, cause, well, I mean, Jerry, Sutton don't forget. Don't forget. Jerry had a um, Jerry had a uh, a crack at Luai in the first minute of the of the game, thinking that he knocked it on. Yeah. Luai shortened him up very quickly yeah. then and said, "No." no, no. I, I enjoyed the fact Challenge. that he challenged that one simply because my initial thought was, "Oh no, he's he's saying that he that the guy the guy pulled it out." And then I looked at the replay and went, "Hang on, no, I know exactly. I'm all right if you challenge if you challenge that one that way." Because if you're ch- using the challenge in the first five minutes for one that may or may not have got pulled out, well, oh, it's a slippery slope to go down. Um, yeah. I, just on the, on the challenge, smart. Thing. He doesn't normally doesn't normally challenge something that isn't. Um, 
on the challenge thing, Cleary gave it to Walker when they challenged and lost. Uh, Katie Walker doesn't <laughs> like it, doesn't like coughing it, that's for sure. Uh, well, he also, he, also, he also gave it to Cody Walker when uh, Cody Walker threw that intercept. Well, let's get to um, that. Um, so that play happens where uh, the Paulo goes in the end goal. Then I think the Walker stuff-ups, uh, Walker, the Edwards stuff-ups happen. Um, and then yep. South feel like, you feel like they've repelled a few chances. All right, they're going to hit back here. Um, and Cody Walker, probably for the first time in quite a while, gets one of those those three on twos wrong. He doesn't he doesn't play what's in front and just thinks he's going to hit the guy out ball straight away. He doesn't even look. And Should Stephen Brighton the first with, an, with an amazing bit of just anticipation. And there's a really cool replay they showed after the game where you can see he just times that ability to jump up and grab it. As it hits his hands, you just look to your right and you can see Alex Johnson's face just go to ash, like mm. old Avengers Endgame style or whatever it was. Like, <laughs> uh, it just he just disappears because um, he just knows that's that's potentially the grand final. Uh, they kick the goal. It's fourteen uh, points to eight. I love the smell of grand finals in the morning. And there's about 10 minutes to go, Cocksmith. I'm thinking the first chance that Cleary gets, he's having a crack at, at one point. Because I think the, at that stage, the, the value in knocking Souths out is worth the seven tackles, I, I think, if they had their chance. Yeah. But yeah. it just felt like that next five minutes was a bit of treading water and you're like, hang on. Well, wasn't that the yeah. moment when Tyrone May was on and... Uh... Oh, the ball. Tyrone May in the middle what of the Tyrone team photo. May? At, what? He's, there, he's there to be in the middle of the team photo with the Winfield, uh, with the Telstra Premiership trophy at the end. Going, I'm the best. Look at me. I knocked on. That's anything you remember I did in the whole game. He shouldn't be in the team, mate. <sighs> I'm telling you now. He's a waste of space on that. I, I would have put four forwards in hindsight, four <laughs> forwards on the bench. Honestly, or Isaac Tago would have been better. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, uh, I just don't get it. I, I, I don't understand it. Other than I know that he and he and Nathan Cleary are really good mates. Mm. I just don't get why they have him in the team. I mean, he doesn't offer a whole lot at all at any time. He's not a half. He's not a lock. He's not a five. He's not, he shouldn't be in the team. I don't get it. I'm gl- really glad Penrith won. And I'm happy for all the boys who got their rings and yeah. you know, some put in more than others. But um, I just don't understand. I just don't get it. I, I mean, <laughs> even the way he played, even the way that Brent Naden played last time he played for Penrith was better than, yeah. than what... Tyrone. Tyrone May should be arrested for impersonating a half. He doesn't need <laughs> to be in forward the tonight. That's where he was playing. Oh, yeah, well, and then you, move, you move poor old Isaiah Yo, who we'll get to the um, Clive Churchill soon, but Isaiah Yo is immense in the middle. Uh, he moved into prop in the last 15 minutes to get Tyrone May into the game. Like, anyway, um, it all worked. They won the premiership. Um, South mm. finally get their chance. Burton gives away a penalty. Um, and they basically got that one chance. A nice mm. play to the left. It, it it is another reason why I just cannot believe Alex Johnson wasn't considered one of the two best wingers in the comp. The way he scored that try with no room and yeah, like a, well. meter, a meter from Dane Gagai and was ready for the pass, took the pass, put it down. Uh, it cried me a pretty ordinary read in the end of that for that actual play because he didn't have to come in. Momorowski had adapted really well from shifting from Murray to um, Gagai. And Adam Reynolds steps up now for three years. Adam Reynolds, had, or up until about halfway through this year, Adam Reynolds has been money or jam from the left-hand side touchline for yeah. South. Money for jam. And then this year, he's sort of changed not every kick he's or not majority of kicks he's done from that side, but he, he seemed to try out a different way of kicking. It hasn't always worked yeah. for him where he sort of almost kicked it straight and then it would bend to the right, where he's always been hit it through the ball and have it fade back over the... Come back. Yeah. Come back. He hit it pretty well it had enough legs but it stays out to the right and you're thinking just did you just feel like the entire atmosphere just drain out of the tv because it was like i no, think it's over no i didn't you, no, you, I didn't. you still worried but, but i didn't but i didn't i didn't back south either correct see that's that's the that's the way so, to, like, they showed alex johnson after he scored you know how they go back to the player and you could just see that it was just like oh, like oh mm. no um there was four minutes left after that did you think they'd get another chance uh, I, you know what, the two the two point field goal kind of eluded me altogether. 
Um, mm. it kind okay. of, I didn't even think about that. It hasn't been around for long enough for me to think about. But um, I actually thought they might get another try. I actually thought they they might um, get down there again because they went down there pretty easy that time when they when they scored through Johnson. They did get a chance, and Cody Walker doesn't get it right. Now, do you reckon Cleary got anything on that, or was it all hand? On that shift to the left. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think you got anything on it. From the angles I saw, and I'd like to see some really super slow mos. I can't say he definitely touched it. I thought the pass mm. wasn't great. The pass was in behind. It looked like the pass, or the, the way he tried to get it out, it wasn't. He sort of waited a half a second too long, and clearly got his hand in there. But it's still a, a gut. That's that's the genuine 50-50 one that I actually could have seen go either way. It, it, it yeah, because you could hear. As Sutton's working, walking towards the middle of the field, he's going, have you got a call on that? So he's doing yeah, people in yeah, the ear. He asked for it. He and, did, there and was no challenges hear, left. That, he, when you hear that, Cop Smith, do you immediately think that he thought it was a knock-on from Cleary? Because that's what I thought I, the moment he said that. I thought, no, I, I just thought to myself, he didn't know and he doesn't want to, want to look like a dickhead by oh. having the replay go over and over and he got it wrong. That's what I think. No, he, he missed a few other ones. But it was, it's, a, it's a big call on the screen because, I mean, imagine one set of six... South, mm. at the very least, if you, nothing's happening, do you go for the two-point field? Oh, I guess you can't. You're too far close off the field. But it would have been the, well, the game. Yeah. The game was over then, and then the ball. Well, he got, tried to he, he tried to slot one, but well, he got he he got his chance. The story of the the grand final for me is, and this is where we get to the Clive Churchill thing, is it, it's on this play because all night Penrith they they had stuck true to their job of pressuring the Reynolds as much as they could. They'd harassed him. Mm. Whereas the opposite had happened south, the likes of Murray and uh, Cook, who are usually excellent at it, just didn't have the gas from the defensive work they were doing. They just they were they were trying to get to Cleary, but there was never a bit a moment where they actually got to him. And this play comes right at the end and south are 42 meters out. And I cannot believe that for the first time all match, Penrith give I think uh, give Adam Reynolds a free shot at a 40 point 40 yard field goal. Mm. Mm. And he and he didn't hit it well, and it's and it's it's skewed and fallen short and gone to the crossbar. Adam Reynolds had two chances to tie this game up, Cocksmith, and and failed on both of them. He, uh, as my mate said, is he going to sleep a wink tonight? Because like, I'd find it hard. I'd find it real hard. That's that's two well, daggers in your heart, isn't it? I know, but neither of them were gimmies. I mean, he's got a bad groin. For starters, um, mm. and he's trying to kick goals from the sideline, even though he does, you know, normally just ice them. But the forty, the forty meter um, drop goal, you know, again, it's a, it's a it's a low percentage play. That's why they offered up two points for it. Um, but he's he's you know, done it already this year a couple of times, I think. I, mean, I think I think um, Cleary's done it once as well this year. I mean, there's been a couple of them that have done it, but I I just don't think um, I just don't think uh, you know, with South, you know, they they just didn't finish like they've been. They didn't finish their plays. They didn't finish their sets through the whole night the way that they've been finishing in the last six weeks of the season, you know. And, and I've got to put that down to, to Penrith's defence, you know. The Penrith's defence is very good. In saying that, obviously, Reynolds was injured, you know, with the bad groin and uh, Arrow was off with a... With a Arrow was a big neck loss. Or head. Big loss. You know, um, because we spoke about this the other day that when Arrow and Burgess come on, they they click up a gear and off they go. I thought go. Burgess well, did his job. Burgess was was a really strong presence for him. He played quite well. Hmm. Um, but yeah, but, uh, look. But yeah. obviously, Penrith. If we if we if we were talking about it on this podcast, Penrith were talking about how to you know maybe stop them from getting uh, ascendancy once they come back on and yeah. and you know the way you do it's with big defence and and. They they seemed to really wake up in defence when when Burgess and Arrow came on and Arrow was filthy Arrow was filthy about that that tackle uh, mm. with kick out but but I mean it is what it is it's just no reason to be filthy no surely um, let's get to the Clive Churchill medal because Penrith have won it fourteen points to twelve really good grand mm. final. And they announce, and to announce to to hand over the Clive Churchill medal, it's going to be Penrith coach Ivan Cleary. Well, there was no, there was no NRL, there was there was no NRL people on stage. Oh, surely they could have got um, Scotty Sattler to give out both, um, but it, it sort of took you knew. Okay, he's going to get it. 
really good performance. Uh, kicking game, I mean, I'm looking at the stats now, five force dropouts for Penrith, none for South. But that's not always our story. But just that kicking game was excellent. Um, mm. I didn't have him as the best player on the field. Uh, in saying that, I only had one other player that really jumped in my mind as who I thought probably had the most influence in the middle where the game was mostly played tonight. And that was Isaiah Yo. Um, that's who I thought was the, the best player on the field for mine. Where were you at? Well, look, I, I think I might have predicted Isaiah Yo for, for the Clive Churchill when we spoke last time. I actually didn't. I, I, I think Isaiah Yo was immense. But, you know, I, I think... I think they all all played pretty well. I, I, I don't think there's a player there that's going to rate under six um, other than Tyro May. Um, but I really, thought, I really thought Brian Tyro had a, had a great game. Okay. I, I thought Tyro had a, had a great game. I thought he, he really got them out of their ends um, when, when needed. I mean, there's a couple of times there where he took two hit, hit ups in a set of six. Um, Part of the course for him generally. And, and, and he's sometimes the difference between the two. I, 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 mate, I would have been happy to hand out three medals tonight if they could. Uh, one yeah. to Toto, one to Yo, and one to, to Cleary. But I guess on reflection, you know, and I'll probably watch the game again tomorrow, at least the condensed version. Yeah. Um, Cleary was kind of in everything. You know, he's he's the centerpiece of that team. They find it hard to win without him. Um, you know, uh, but Yo is very important too. He's, you know, it was it was fitting that Yo took that last. Uh, last hit up from dummy half because yeah. no one's stealing the ball off Isaiah like, Yo, I'll tell you uh, now, you know. And he spoke really well at the end when he did the speech. <laughs> he, he had Nathan's speech covered. Um, actually, Nathan, when he accepted his uh, Clive Churchill medal, he had a bit of a uh, uh, thing when he, when he said, let's do it, uh, right at the end, which I thought was <laughs> hilarious. Everyone forgets how young he is. Um, got a lot, of, got a, yeah. a lot of great years to watch Nathan Cleary run around and work on those uh, Clive Churchill meeting winning speeches because the next one's got to be better <laughs> than that one. Uh, uh, all in all, uh, uh, I'm happy to say Penrith have, have turned the last two years into at least one premiership. Uh, yeah. South have had two really good years as well. Uh, but uh, the only disappointing element from a South point of view is um, Benji, who, who may go around next year. It, I saw him interview just before we came on to record and he was saying, look, I... I, I well, the body's still feeling good. I'm thinking about playing. Um, didn't have much of a role tonight, and the game didn't really um, allow him to get on the field until um, my least came on for, for Gagai getting HIA. But in terms of an actual role in the game, until right at the end when they needed points. And Wayne Bennett mm. um, now has uh, seven, eight wins. Eight wins from 10? So, uh, eight from He's 10. He's yes. lost two. Yeah. He's lost two. He's lost two. Three. He's lost three. He's lost three. He lost uh, Canberra, he's okay. lost, so lost seven. Brisbane, and he's lost um, South Sydney. Um, so that's the two people I felt sorry for in regards to that. Um, Adam Reynolds, look, great career at South, but uh, he wanted more money and Brisbane were willing to pay it in South Point. That's the long and the short of, of that story yeah. uh, for a longer period he wanted, of time. So. He, he wanted one more year, really. That's yeah. what he wanted. He wanted one South more year guaranteed big, big coin and South went, mm, no. So that's a shame, but he's had two really good years for him to finish out his time there. Yeah. Penrith, take the title. Um, any last thoughts on, on I guess, Penrith and, and what lays next for them? Because they've got a pretty young and talented side. Yeah, look, I, I, I've heard whispers today that Kikau is going to hit, hang around for another okay. year, next year. Uh, I don't think they're going to lose many players, although I think uh, from what they're saying on the TV, it uh, looks like Staines and um, who was the other one? One other um, may go. Um or have to be moved on to pay for, you know, so they don't pop the, the cap next year, yep. which will which will thin out their depths a little bit. But that's the that's what happens with premiers, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, everyone thinks they deserve big dollars. Um, I'd be interested to know what they're paying Tyro May. But anyway, uh, because you know um, they're going to lose Burton. Um, he's going to be a big loss. Although Crichton, you know, Crichton's a waste on the wing. I know tonight was. You know, if you, if you had your time, you want him there to make that intercept. But um, I don't think Momorowski makes I, that play he, just quietly. Coxman. He he's got to get his hands on the ball a bit more, and I'd love yeah. to see him in the one. I really would. I mean, uh, Dylan Edwards has, has been pretty good. Put him on the he wing. Wasn't great tonight. He'll do your job. Yeah. He'll do. He'll, yeah, got two tight on the wing then from that perspective. Like, yeah, yeah. So, so and Momorowski, I think, staying for another year. So look, I, I think. Yeah. 
I think Penrith, Penrith have still got the window open, mate. That that yeah, um, absolutely. elusive premiership window. I just don't um, want to hear South's... the D word, please, please, people. We know how hard it is to win the competition one year, let alone a bunch in a row. Yeah. Just, please yeah, do not well, have this on any of the papers or the websites tomorrow. Please, please don't use the D word. Please. I, I think I think South will, will struggle um, next mm. year without. Well, well, you know, Bennett to a degree, but Reynolds has been the heart and soul of that place. He's kind of like the Cleary of of, um, of Souths, you know. So he's a kicker, he's the organizer, um, you know. So I felt I felt for him tonight. I felt for Benji as well. But I was happy to see Penrith avenge the loss uh, from last year, and I thought it was a bit ironic that um, uh, Cameron Smith was interviewing Cleary afterwards and <laughs> asked him. <laughs> both interviews. Both interviews. Yeah. Nathan Cleary and Ivan Cleary start with. Yeah. Oh, Melbourne are pretty good. We won the comp last year. Um, I think that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> both yeah. interviews. He couldn't. He couldn't help himself. I guess he had those written down. though, didn't he? he had that. Had that note. Oh down. well, he probably had. Oh, probably had someone. Probably had someone in his ear telling him like, oh, what to say. Speaking but, of which, yeah. JT and um, who was he talking to? Isaiah Yo at the end. Did you see that? No. JT. Hi everybody. I got I got co-captain Isaiah Yo um, here. Uh, what did what did you make of that? Did you, you feel like it was good to win the grand final? And then kept the microphone under his own mouth. And it's staying there. <laughs> it's staying there for yeah. like five seconds and yeah. ten seconds, and you can barely hear Isaiah Yo in the background. And then you start looking at JT's face. And he's obviously just getting blasted in the ear by the producer. Move the microphone, move the... And you can see all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's Christ the bird. Uh, I love it. I did, I love it a bit on, on the sideline. JT was, um, had been thrown to by Rabs uh, just as the pass from Cody Walker got thrown. And you hear, right. you hear JT going, yeah, I really think they should, whoa! <laughs> I just, I really enjoyed <laughs> That you're going to get that that edge of the seat kind of stuff from a guy like JT. Um, really good. Yeah. Final point on JT. Uh, I know TV runs the roost and and it just does, but he was doing Welcome to Country tonight, and they started the national anthem while he was finishing Welcome to Country. Not cool. Mm. I just didn't like the fact they hurried him off the stage just for the fact that the game has to start at a certain time, and we know that Channel Nine will take forever to start any contest mm. if they want to. Um, he had a look on his face as you can hear the, um, the anthem starting in the background was like, and well, I guess I'm done. And I was just like, oh, not cool. I didn't enjoy that. Well, I mean, the only people to blame are his employers. Correct. Correct. So, I, you know, I don't think it's a stadium call, that one. I think it's a, no. the TV. I don't think there's any disrespect meant to no, the it's Indigenous just, people. It's just like, okay, no. we're, we're done that. That ticked that one off the list. Hurry up, let's go. It's just like, so I, it's, I, it's one of the things I love about when they do those, if you get the, the characters sometimes giving those and they're like hey, if you had a good game have you had a great time drink a beer have some fun and like i was thinking was jt got like a line or something at the end you can add to that like how good is it to have the, the grand final in queensland or something anyway in queensland i hope you enjoyed the last ever grand final in queensland because it ain't coming back up there that's for sure um anyway a uh, uh, hey, quick question quick yes. question do you reckon they're going to get locked down tomorrow queensland <laughs> Well, if, if they're not locked down, just to get really serious for a second, I sure hope that um, the uptick of cases out in Mount Druitt and Penrith and all that other stuff from tonight's celebration yeah. don't kill us getting out of lockdown here in Sydney. I could not see a mask. A, I couldn't see a mask in, at Suncorp and I couldn't see a mask in Mount Druitt. But anyway, everybody, that's episode 249 of the Footy Show. I've been working for some. That's been Rob Cox or Boise Simmons hogging the um, Premiership Trophy. I hope you really enjoyed the grand final if you're a Penrith fan. Commiserations if you're a South fan. That was a gutsy effort that just fell short. Uh, but, you know, another wonderful year. And, and two prelim finals and grand final under Wayne Bennett. Um, I think you, you you got a pretty good return on your investment with that guy. Mm. Uh, Cocksmith, any last words as we wrap up the show? Pepsi. Not the show. A long off season last year after the grand final loss to Melbourne. Tell me your feelings that you got right now after tonight. It's, it's surreal, actually. Uh, probably probably the biggest thing I can think of. Uh, these boys are incredible. Uh, we've got to get like five guys, probably shouldn't have played tonight, the Harvey Chain. That's been going around for three weeks. It's just, you know, what can I say about this? And it showed, like, through the final series, you had to do it the hard way after losing to the Rabbitohs in the first week. You've been bruised, you've been battered, but it just seemed like the players got up every week and they wanted to be out there for the jersey and the people around them. Just a shout out to all the crew back in uh, Manning. I'm feeling like I'm mad. Uh, that 
boys that uh, they should be proud of them. Uh, you know, that's like grindy game, but I mean, that's sort of what, what they came out of the end of the year. So, they just, the boys just don't get in. Special night for you and Nathan. He's the kind of line, and he's picked up the five church. Well, tell me about the breaks after the game, and then we're getting the opportunity to present him with that medal on the stage. Yeah, well, it's right, hard to do it too. It was, uh, you know, obviously, I'm coaching every day, and, uh, but I think his son as well. It's, uh, it's like his own thing, obviously. He's been in the five church, but he's been in the red so it's uh, pretty good. Cool. It's people's escape, it's people's relaxation, and we need to do everything in order to continue that great uh, tradition of not the show. show. Birthday boy. Birthday boy. One third. Watch that following. Honestly, feels like a dream. You've been sleeping over there. Pepsi.